Hello and welcome to our virtual public program, She Changed the World, North Carolina Women Breaking Barriers. I'm Paul Sailors, local history assistant at the Wayne County Public Library. In coordination with the State Library of North Carolina and the North Carolina Department of Natural and Cultural Resources, Wayne County Public Library is hosting three virtual programs that will feature powerful women from Goldsboro and celebrate their strength, resilience, courage, and bravery. This is a statewide program in which other North Carolina libraries are participating. We chose to call our local program, Well-Behaved Women Seldom Make History, a quote many of us have seen on t-shirts and coffee mugs. These programs continue the library stewardship by sharing the lives of three incredible women from Goldsboro, Gertrude Wheel, Ruth Whitehead Whaley, and Dorothy Foreman Cotton. In 1933, at the Wayne County Courthouse, Ruth Whitehead Whaley became the first black woman in North Carolina sworn into practice law. She was the first black woman to graduate cum laude from Fordham Law School in New York and the third black woman to be admitted to the New York Bar in 1925. Ruth Whitehead was born in 1901 to Charles and Dora Whitehead. Charles, a native of Tarboro, and Dora, a native of Goldsboro. She grew up on Elm Street, just beyond Willowdale Cemetery, where that red circle is located on this 1881 Goldsboro map, just 20 years before Ruth was born. Both Charles and Dora were school teachers, which most likely drove Ruth to further her education. Ruth attended Livingstone College in Salisbury, North Carolina, founded in 1879 by the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. Ruth graduated in 1919 and today, Livingston lists her as one of only 15 graduates under the title Notable Alumni. In the summer of 1920, Ruth married Herman S. Whaley. They later had two children. They named Herman and Ruth. In 1921, with Herman's encouragement, Ruth enrolled at Fordham University's Law School in New York City. She was the first woman to graduate from Fordham's Law School and received her degree, cum laude, in 1924. She was number one in her class. Her status as the top of the student class created controversy. The student with the highest marks had been promised a set of law books. However, jealousy from male graduates in this class created mayhem as to whom should be declared the winner. That summer she wrote a three-page letter to Fordham University stating that, quote, I am cognizant that even at Fordham University Law School, winning is not always synonymous with receiving, end quote. In the end, she never received the promised books. The same summer, she wrote Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois, civil rights educator and activist. Again, this is 1924, only four years after women were granted the right to vote. In the letter, she says, My dear sir, I am writing to inform you that I have been officially notified by the New York State Board of Law Examiners that I have successfully passed the bar examination of June 26th and 27th and have been certified for admission to practice law in this state. Because of your kindly interest and articles, I feel it proper to acquaint you with this happy culmination of the past three years of study. Very truly yours, Ruth Whitehead Whaley. This is Ruth signing a register as two soldiers witness in 1925, she passed the bar and became the first black woman to practice law in New York. Her main pursuits on two fronts became a lifelong fight for the rights of women and people of color. In 1933, 
she returned to Goldsboro, and with the help of attorney Hugh Dortch, she was granted a license to practice law in North Carolina, the first woman of color to do so. She maintained a private law practice in New York until 1944. If any of you all know me personally, I am a huge architecture fan and uh, actually studied historic preservation, so I had to dig into where she, her law practice was located in New York. And her law office was here at the corner of Chambers and Broadway, the red building, taller building there on the left. And this building was designed by Cass Gilbert, um, a man who I studied in college. He was a prominent architect of early skyscrapers in the late 19th and early 20th century. Cass Gilbert also designed the building at 277 Broadway as well as the Woolworth building at 233 Broadway. He also was the architect who designed the United States Supreme Court building in Washington, D.C. I found this ironic as Ruth Whaley was a civil rights activist. The building she had her law practice in was designed by a man who designed the Supreme Court building and the Woolworth building. And as we all know, the sit-ins began um, in Woolworths. And of course, the Supreme Court passed the Civil Rights Act. And I just found this very ironic for Ruth. This is a picture of Ruth Whaley in 1944 being sworn in as secretary of the New York City Board of Estimate by Mayor Vincent R. Impilitari. He was the mayor of New York from 1950 to 1953. They were the same age, Ruth and Vincent. He having immigrated from Sicily at age one with his parents, his father being a cobbler. She having moved from the South at age 20. Both went to Fordham Law School and both graduated in 1924. You may ask what the Board of Estimate is in New York. The Board of Estimate in New York was a governmental body responsible for numerous areas of municipal policy and decisions, including the city budget, land use, contracts, franchises, and water rates. Now I would like to introduce Lisa Henderson. She is an attorney and a native of Wilson, she also has family ties to Wayne County, and she will talk a bit about Ruth Whitehead Whaley. Good morning, and thank you to Paul Sailors and Marty Shetter uh, and the Wayne County Public Library for inviting me to share a few words um, and to participate in this uh, amazing program. Uh, my name is Lisa Henderson. I am <clears throat> excuse me, a native of Wilson, North Carolina, about 20 miles, 25 miles up the road from Goldsboro. Uh, and uh, I actually have Wayne County roots. My grandmother, my paternal grandmother was born in Dudley and her family, uh, part of it was from uh, the Northern Wayne County area of Eureka. And uh, then another part was from Southern Wayne County around uh, around Dudley and, and Mount Olive. Uh, I am a lawyer now in Atlanta. I attended the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And uh, during my junior year, I was an English major actually, but during my junior year, I had sort of a random conversation with someone who, which led me to uh, census records on microfilm. I had no idea that before then that they existed. And um, finding those census records led me to a discovery of my ancestry uh, back into the early 1800s, including lots of information about my Wayne County roots. 
So my, uh, what began sort of as a fascination with genealogy led to a desire to understand the context of my ancestors' lives. And that led to an interest in history, um, which ultimately led me to Columbia, to a, a, a graduate program in, in history. But uh, a few years ago, um, just as, as a side project for my own personal um, edification, I began a blog dedicated to the African-American uh, people in history of Wilson County. And while researching for that blog, uh, I ran across a short newspaper clipping that stopped me in my tracks. It was the announcement that Ruth Whitehead Whaley had been, admitted, had been admitted to the North Carolina bar, that she was the first African-American woman uh, to have been admitted to the North Carolina bar, and that she was from Goldsboro. Um, and, and as an aside, uh, she was the man who swore her in was Judge Frank A. Daniels, uh, who uh, was from Wilson and was the brother of Josephus Daniels, uh, who's, who's been in the newspaper uh, recently. Um, but anyway, I, so I, I ran across this article about Ms. Whaley's admission to the bar, and, and I immediately wanted to know more. I mean, who, I had never heard her name before. Um, who was this woman? Uh, I began to search further, and um, this, of course, led me to many of the facts of Whaley's life um, that Paul has shared here today, uh, including this incredibly courageous charge of racism that Ms. Whaley levied, uh, leveled against uh, Fordham University in the, in the um, uh, it's, she wrote W.B. Du Bois for assistance uh, in this. I mean, this, is, this was astonishing to me. I, I, you know, uh, uh, this was a, an act of resistance in that time and place um, that really boggles the mind. And so the more I, you know, I read about her, her work in civil service law, which was, of course, vitally important, uh, in, an, in an era in which government was one of the few paths to the middle class that was available to African Americans. Uh, her work with the National Council uh, of Negro Women, um, and, and then the, the recognition um, by Fordham University of Whaley's barrier-breaking career. Um, again, just really, uh, just, uh, an amazing woman, barrier-breaking woman. So Ruth, Ruth Whitehead Whaley did not inspire me to become an attorney. I mean, I, I'd taken the bar, taken my oath to practice 20 years earlier, long before I had heard of her. But she has impacted me and inspired me profoundly in another way. Uh, I mentioned that I created a blog a, a few years ago. It's called uh, Black White Wake. And I was motivated to create this blog by a desire to fill in some of the erasures uh, of history. In other words, to, to repopulate um, the historic landscape with the names and the deeds of African American men and women who, against all odds, fought to secure better lives, and then reached back to help, uh, you know, bring others along with them. I, yeah, I, I strongly believe that you know a woman like Ruth Whitehead Whaley's legacy should not be buried in microfilm uh, or obscure links to newspaper databases on the internet. Um, young men, young women, especially 
uh, African American youth should know the history of this woman born in Goldsboro in perhaps the darkest hour of North Carolina history. When African Americans had been stripped of nearly all their political rights uh, and representation, uh, speaking of Josephus Daniels, and uh, she was born into a world that placed little value on the contributions of black girls beyond cooking and cleaning. And yet she dared to create a life uh, almost beyond imagination. Um, Whaley changed the world she knew. And I think it's critically important that young people um, see themselves in history, that they have access to stories of men and women, and especially women who look like them and face challenges similar or even greater than those they face and who made a way, perhaps out of what seemed no way. I'm a big proponent of the idea that every month is Black History Month, um, that the history of African Americans is woven inextricably into the American historical tapestry. And I love the stories of Harriet Tubman and Frederick Douglass and Sojourner Truth, but I love even more the stories of world changers like Ruth Whitehead Whaley, the stories of people who walked the very same streets that my grandparents walked, who gazed across the same railroad tracks, who confronted the same systemic barriers, many of which uh, continue to thwart the dreams of young people uh, in Goldsboro and, and across the state and across the land. Um, my blog is a daily quest to uncover more Ruth Whitehead Whaley's. I'm reminded of my surprise and then my wonder and then pride when I encountered that short newspaper clipping. And then I amplify those stories. So I am grateful to Ruth Whitehead Whaley for reminding me um, that these stories are there, that, that women uh, like her existed um, and that their stories need to be told. Thank you. Local journalist and historian Sherwood Williford wrote in his article about Whaley in the News Argus, quote, Based on the broad notifications of Ruth Whitehead Whaley's death, it can only be assumed that the knowledge of her works were not confined to New York. In a search, I was able to document a handful of cities where local newspapers published her obituary, including West Palm Beach, Des Moines, Clovis, Detroit, Los Angeles, Pittsburgh, Fort Myers, Wilmington, Atlanta, and her hometown paper, The New York Times." End quote. Thank you for joining us for our second in this series of well-behaved women seldom make history. I want to send a special thank you to the Schomburg Center for Research and Black Culture in New York. It's a research division of the New York Public Library. They provided us with pictures, the black and white pictures of Ruth.